Now agents give you an unfair advantage and this chart shows just how unfair. In this study at an elite consulting firm, so this is not just an average company, this is like a high-end company where the average salary is like 200k. Consultants with GPT-4 outperformed those who did not use it by a lot. And again, those are skilled experts. The test used 18 different tasks selected to be realistic samples typical of this field of work. So these tasks were specifically selected to be actually useful. That way, this is a practical representation of the kind of advantage you get by using agents. 12.2% more tasks were completed by the people who used AI, 25.1% faster, and the quality of the tasks of the work increased by 40%. Now, you need to get rid of linear thinking. And here's what I mean. The capabilities of agents are not linear. They are essentially unpredictable, which is like the exact opposite, right? Agents do not improve the same ways humans do. So people think of like, you know, you have an agent and maybe that has the skills of 20 year old. And then the next versions have the intelligence of a 17 year old. That's, it's not like that. Agents are much more random and unpredictable. And you definitely cannot use the, you know, model you have with how humans grow up and get smarter with agents. It's more like agents have some abilities that are superhuman, like, you know, able to comprehend hundreds of thousands of tokens in a matter of seconds, which no human can do. And then they have some abilities that are worse than a toddler, meaning you can trick it with like basic logic puzzles or even, um, you know, just understanding the physical world. Agents cannot do that. This is why emergent properties are a surprise. <laughs> like as, as crazy as that sounds, LLMs are still a black box. Not even OpenAI and DeepMind are able to predict how the next generation of LLMs will look. So if the best AI researchers in the world can't do that, me and you definitely can't. Same, go for, same goes for agents. Their abilities are not uniformly dis distributed across tasks. Some tasks that seem similar in difficulty to humans may be vastly different in AI. So if you say like, okay, learning how to read and doing basic math, is the same, you know, grade one, grade two. For agents, that's not the same. Agents cannot, can read pretty well, but they're terrible at math. So, you know, just it's, it's super different and keep an open mind. Now, there is a risk of over-reliance on agents. And actually, this was proven. In some tasks where AI gives convincing but incorrect answers, humans from this test actually performed worse when they used AI than when they didn't use anything. So overconfidence in AI can lead to falling uh, asleep at the wheel. You know, same analogy as at the car, meaning you shut down your brain and stop thinking. Now, you know, if, <laughs> if you read George Orwell, you know that this can be ultra dangerous. So no matter how good AI is, always preserve the ability to think for yourself. So AI agents, you know, today the way most of us use large language models is like this, uh, with a non-agentic workflow where you type a prompt and generate an answer. And that's a bit like if you ask a person to write an essay on a topic, and I say, please sit down at the keyboard and just type the essay from start to finish without ever using backspace. Um, and despite how hard this is, LMs do it remarkably well. In contrast, with an agentic workflow, this is what it may look like. Have an AI, have an LLM, say, write an essay outline. Do you need to do any web research? If so, let's do that. Then write the first draft, and then read your own first draft and think about what parts need revision. And then revise your draft, and you go on and on. And so this workflow is much more iterative, where you may have the LLM do some thinking, um, and then revise this article, and then do some more thinking and iterate this through a number of times. And what not many people appreciate is this delivers remarkably better results. Hey, I'm Scott from Cognition AI, and today I'm really excited to introduce you to Devin, the first AI software engineer. Let me show you an example of Devin in action. I'm gonna ask Devin to benchmark the performance of Llama on a couple of different API providers. From now on, Devin is in the driver's seat. First, Devin makes a step-by-step -step plan of how to tackle the problem. After that, it builds the whole project using all the same tools that a human software engineer would use. Devin has its own command line, its own code editor, and even its own browser. 
In this case, Devin decides to use the browser to pull up API documentation so that it can read up and learn how to plug into each of these APIs. Here, Devin runs into an unexpected error. Devin actually decides to add a debugging print statement, reruns the code with the debugging print statement, and then uses the error in the logs to figure out how to fix the bug. Finally, Devin decides to build and deploy a website with full styling as the visualization. You can see the website here. All of this is possible today because of the advancements that we've made in both reasoning and long-term planning. It's a really hard problem, and we've only just started, but we're super excited about the progress that we've made so far. In the meantime, if you'd like to try out Devin on your own real-world tasks, send us a request below, and we'd be happy to forward it to Devin. We're introducing Vertex AI Agent Builder. You can now create customer agents that are amazingly powerful in just three key steps. First, you can use Gemini Pro to create free-flowing, human-like conversations with text, voice, images, and video as inputs and personalize them with custom voice models. Second, you can use natural language instructions to control the conversation flow and guide it on specific topics you don't want it to discuss, such as current events, in the same way that you train your human agents. You can also control when it hands over to a human agent with transcription and summarization of its conversation history to make these transitions extremely smooth. Third, you can improve response quality with vector-based and keyword-based search to connect to your internal information and the entire web. You can also use extensions to complete tasks for customers, like updating contact information, booking a flight, ordering food, and many more. GPT-5 will be agent-focused, and not many people know this. OpenAI is currently testing early versions of the model. It's not clear whether they will call it GPT-5 or something else, but they're already testing it with their enterprise clients, meaning large companies. One CEO of such company, who recently saw an early version of GPT-5, said it has the ability to call AI agents to perform tasks autonomously. And the crazy part is, these agents, which GPT-5 can call upon, are developed by OpenAI in-house. power to apply skills and knowledge to make good decisions. We invest years of our lives and trillions of dollars on education, all to develop our ability to make better decisions. Human intelligence is very expensive. This is why only the wealthiest among us can afford to hire huge amounts of intelligence, like that specialist doctor to carefully examine, think about, and advise you on a medical condition, or a tutor that can truly take the time to understand your child and gently coach them where they need help. But unlike human intelligence, artificial intelligence can be made cheap. So AI opens up the potential for every individual to hire intelligence inexpensively so that you no longer have to worry about that huge bill from going to see a doctor for falling sick or for getting an education. And you'll be able to hire an army of smart, well-intentioned, well-informed staff to help you think things through. It's, it's going to sound completely opposite of what people feel. Over the course of the last 10 years, 15 years, um, almost everybody who sits on a stage like this would tell you it is vital that your children learn computer science. Um, everybody should learn how to program. And in fact, it's almost exactly the opposite. It is our job to create computing technology such that nobody has to program and that the programming language is human. Everybody in the world is now a programmer. This is the miracle of artificial intelligence. The countries, the people that understand how to solve a domain problem in digital biology or in education of young people, or in manufacturing, or in farming, those people who understand domain expertise 
now can utilize technology that is readily available to you. You now have a computer that will do what you tell it to do. It is vital that we upskill everyone and the upskilling process, I, I believe, will be delightful, surprising, 